Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a fantastic day. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. There we go, founded in 1509, that's a long time ago. Berenberg Capital Markets is one of Europe's most influential banks. Recently, it has turned its analytical gaze towards MicroStrategy, a software company with significant investments in Bitcoin. You must all know MicroStrategy at this point. They are the cryptocurrency bit... No, 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 no. They're a Bitcoin-based company who collects massive amount of Bitcoin. Uh, they have been in the news since roughly around 2017 somewhere around there, and they currently hold, I think it's like 153,000 Bitcoin or something like that. We've been talking about them for a while. I think one of their goals is to literally own all the Bitcoin on the planet, and they seem to be on the right track. The bank's report, shared with the U.S. media outlet The Block, suggests that the company's stock performance is largely influenced by their Bitcoin holdings. What? That's crazy. A Bitcoin company whose stock is influenced by how much Bitcoin they have because they're a Bitcoin company. I've never heard of anything like that. In particular, the bank points to the 150,000 Bitcoin that MicroStrategy currently owns. That's a lot of Bitcoin. The bank's further report. Wait, report goes further. There we go. Suggesting a correlation. What? Between the performance of MicroStrategy shares and the price of Bitcoin. I mean, how do I say this nicely so that we can move on? Um, a lot of times, so I know that we, this is me, this is, this is TMI's opinion. I know that we are on the cusp of the next bull run and or already in the next bull run uh, because of the things that companies and institutions and banks are beginning to say. This is the same exact similar thing that we saw around 2019, 2020 where basically people come forward and they make uh, predictions about the cryptocurrency space that are so completely logical, but I think they do it in order to kind of gain some type of extra influence. For example, years ago, we had people like, um, what's this guy's name? Robert Kiyosaki, the, 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 the guy who uh, wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, Mike Novogratz, uh, what's the other one? Oh gosh, the guy with the face, the the... the Raul Pal, yeah, this guy as well. They make predictions that are so completely obvious. Like, for instance, they're like, oh, Bitcoin's definitely going to hit 10,000. And then Bitcoin goes to 20,000 and they end up kind of looking like geniuses almost. So expect a whole bunch more price predictions to be coming out as we uh, glide into 2024. But a lot of the stuff that people say is like, so for instance, like so someone write this down. Oh my gosh, I'm almost certain that because of the price movement of Bitcoin and all the analyticals, I, I, I think Bitcoin's going to hit 71,000. I don't know how, but I'm just kind of assuming that it's going to go that way. I assume that companies who are holding Bitcoin, now hold on to your horses for this one. I assume that companies who are holding Bitcoin, as Bitcoin goes up to 71,000, that these companies will get richer. I don't know how I know it, but I'm, I'm just kind of, you know, guessing at this point that it's going to happen. And, you know, I'm going to even, you know, extrapolate from there. And I'm going to assume that at some point, Bitcoin's going to hit 100K. I know it sounds crazy, but hear me out here. You, you know, so this is kind of the, uh, the, the, hmm, the news ends up being that uh, so many people are now coming out of the woodworks to, and it is hot in here. What in the world is going on? It's like 9,000 degrees outside. I, I don't understand. Um, a lot of people are just trying to. I think throw their predictions into a hat or into a bucket to talk about where they think things are going. But like no one's giving anything like really like concretely spectacular. No one's like Bitcoin on this exact date is going to hit this exact number because of X, Y and Z. It's more of a generalized thing. The bank report goes further, suggesting a correlation between the performance of the company that's holding Bitcoin and the price of Bitcoin. If the correlation holds... The bank predicts that a rally in Bitcoin's price could trigger a similar rally in MicroStrategy stock. I would have never, never assumed that. This is based on the observation that rallies typically precede having events in the Bitcoin market. What? 
This bank is genius. This is crazy. If this pattern continues, the bank expects a rally to begin within the next four months. What? And last until October 2025. So water, water is wet and, you know, you need it to take a, a, a shower. Uh, the entire four months has to do with the idea of the uh, Bitcoin ETF approvals. And I, and I say that lightly. It, it didn't sound light, but I said it, you know, light, lightly. Um, as this is the time frame that we've been given as to when we could potentially have a, um, an approval for a Bitcoin ETF. And for those of you who do not know, um, the rallies after we have the halving uh, typically last for about a good year and about a good seven, eight, nine months, somewhere roughly around there. The rally... For 2017, the year after 2016, when the halving happened, lasted until roughly around the end of December, give or take towards the end of the year. Uh, the rally for 2021 lasted until around October, November, until we had the entire FTX fiasco, which I believe was manufactured to be able to bring down the cryptocurrency market, but that's my opinion. And then also the idea is that as all the other ones have lasted roughly until autumn winter, winter-esque autumn, uh, that this one will also last until October 2025. As I'm, I'm actually really excited, not only to make money, of course, uh, but also for everyone to experience, because I know we have a, a lot of new people, new subscribers. Hello to you out there. Uh, to really understand what I mean when I say like the euphoric phase. I think people hear it and they go, yeah, okay, sure. Like we'll, we'll see when it happens. But you lose track of time. Because you wake up in the morning and you check your portfolio and you've made sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars from doing absolutely nothing, and you kind of have the idea that it'll continue for another six, seven, eight months, and it's a really um, the word's not dopamine, but it's something along those lines where you are basically um, anyway, yeah. So that's the uh, one of the oldest banks in the world in Europe. Uh, has said that they expect Bitcoin's rally to begin in four months. A lot of people already believe that we are in the rally, that, you know, as prices have not fallen below 30,000, which is meant to be like the bounce off level, that we will only continue moving up from here. And now we're starting to get like, you know, how long the rally will last. So we now have an October 2025. I would say that seems realistic. September, October, November 2025 is kind of the generalized time frame. When uh, you all need to start uh, looking at your portfolio is a little bit uh, more string stringenty string string cheese. Okay, I'm gonna move. I have not string stringently. That sounds English. Okay, let's move on. Stringent. Okay, why do I keep saying it? All right, let's move on. Also in the news, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the rest of the cryptocurrencies are doing well. It says despite severe regulatory pressure and overall pessimism. I wouldn't say pessimism. I would say Mesopism, it's, it's, it sounds similar, but, you know, not that many people are that negative. I think a lot of people are accumulating right now with an expectation of prices rising. Seasoned, he has some seasoning on him, cryptocurrency investor Vance Spencer has shared his own reasons to stay enthusiastic about what the next few years and decades, whoa, are about to bring for crypto the hotly anticipated spot Bitcoin ETF is going to be approved by the end of this year or sooner. There we go once again. So, and, and I, for me, I like the optimism. I prefer people understanding that uh, Bitcoin and the wider cryptocurrency market are doing just well. Don't you ever forget where we were like last September, last October. Remember when we had Bitcoin around 18,000 and people were like, I'm pretty sure Bitcoin's going to 12,000. That, 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 that pessimism is no longer really in the market. Everyone's kind of looking upwards towards the sky, um, as, it, as it were. But uh, now we have this gigantic, the word's not fusion, um, collision, that is appropriate. Of all these events happening at the exact same time, there are multiple companies who are trying to file for Bitcoin ETFs. There are multiple companies who are applying for Bitcoin funds. We had news a couple of days ago. There are a couple of companies who are trying to make Bitcoin 
uh, what do you call them? Not mutual funds, hedge funds, like where they literally are just investing in Bitcoin and Bitcoin based companies, which is also incredibly bullish for the space as well. So I like seeing the optimism because whenever we have too many good things happening in the space and no one's paying attention and prices continue to fall, I get a little annoyed because it, it logically does not make any sense. So we now have a large number of people who believe that the Bitcoin ETFs with an S are going to be approved. I am trying to, and I implore you as well, to not get too excited simply because we know how the US SEC is. They've been uh, saying no to every Bitcoin ETF over the last 11 or 12 years. And therefore, I try to, you know, have a realistic expectation. I don't have the tab here. Uh, the other guy who used to run the SEC, I think his name was Jay Clayton. He was recently in the news, and I retweeted this on uh, on Twitter. Uh, he basically came out recently and was like, yeah, he sees no reason now to, to disapprove a Bitcoin ETF. And I was like, but you're the reason why for nine years we did not have a Bitcoin ETF. You were the reason why... You didn't tell anyone what they needed in their paperwork to have. So it's this really weird, like, uh, manipul... What's the word? It's kind of like gaslighting, I think, would be the most appropriate word for it when it comes to the SEC and, and what they're doing. Like, if you have seen a couple of weeks ago, the current head of the SEC, was it Michael Jackson? I can't remember his name. He recently came forward and was like, every crypto exchange knows what they have to do. And they're breaking the law on purpose. Now, hear me out here. I would assume that seven, seven different cryptocurrency exchanges all didn't want to get in trouble and pay millions of dollars worth of fees because they were like, I think we should be bad guys. Like, I think you guys don't want to follow the rules, right? So it's, it's this really weird, like, just give regulations and people will follow it. Uh, don't say that you expect a Bitcoin ETF to be, you know, approved when you for nine years made sure that they were not approved. Why are there so, why is this very Batman-y? Why is, why is everyone uh, who's a regulator or meant to like uphold the law in crypto like a villain in, in some, it doesn't, it's, it's very, very sad because they could have, we could be in a brand new age of economic prosperity for the entire world with a system that can be worldwide uh, if regulators simply weren't, special. He says, once the Bitcoin ETF goes live, other cryptocurrencies will also be able to gain investor exposure with similar ETF products. That is definitely something that is going to happen. I expect if gigantic IF, I mean, towering above us, the letters IF, if we get a Bitcoin ETF, we are going to see an Ethereum ETF. And I think the thing that will, I, I, I believe in solidification of the market. So this is why one of the reasons why I think we continue to see XRP news and why I'm also, I, I, would, I would use the word bullish with a lowercase b on XRP because despite the three years of the lawsuit, we still have remained within the top 10. We, you know, it's still one of the larger cryptocurrency coins. And I think that the coins that are within the top 15, top 20, if we get a Bitcoin ETF, we will then be getting an Ethereum ETF, and I think we will start seeing companies really show which coins that they're already into by which other ETFs uh, try to gain approval as well. That is to say, uh, if in the future you see anything about a Cardano, an XRP, a Litecoin ETF coming about, then in, in my opinion, these will be the coins that I would begin to massively myself in the future begin to accumulate because it means that they're basically going to be around for a very long time. These funds aren't being created as like a one year only fund and then no one else is using it. No, these will be around for a very long time as the expectation of these companies making money from it will continue for a number of decades. Such statements were made by Vance Spencer, CEO of Framework Ventures, thesis-driven investing firm on his personal Twitter account. Here it is right here. He says, we are 280 days out from the Bitcoin having 
and a spot Bitcoin ETF looks to be coming by the end of this year, if not sooner. No doubt this will lead to other ETF opportunities for other cryptocurrencies. Yeah, a lot of you, you've seen it. Nearly every single video, every single day, there's these like hyper predictions as to where people believe that the cryptocurrency market is going to go, what it's going to do. Uh, I'm very excited, once again, just to like, I, it is, mm, it's incredible to be in a space where we know that uh, we have like a one and a half year bull run in front of us and like what that'll lead to, how much money people will be able to make, the new opportunities for people within the space and being so close to it, you know, it kind of gets me riled up all over again just to be able to uh, be back in a in a, in a hyper optimistic market, if you will. That's the rich guy uh, says what he thinks about the upcoming bull run news. And yeah, let's move on. Also in, okay, you know what? Sure, why not? Apparently, Satoshi's are now being given out as rewards on something called Satlantis. It's like Atlantis, but with the word Satoshi smashed into it. A unique Bitcoin-themed Minecraft server. This involves the collaboration of Bitcoin payment startup ZBD, that is Z-E-B-E-D-E-E, -E -E -E, uh-huh, and the Minecraft server to fuse the world of cryptocurrency with gaming. While offering over 1 million Satoshis per week to winning players, their earnings may not be extravagant, However, it's a nifty bonus for playing one of the world's most popular video games. Appealing to the most dedicated gamers, this Bitcoin initiative adds a real twist to gameplay. So apparently this is not an, as far as I know from looking around, this is not an official uh, collaboration between Bitcoin and Minecraft. Bitcoin is not a company, but you understand what I mean. It appears to be a company who has a server on Minecraft who is allowing people to earn Satoshis for playing or winning things inside of the game. Uh, I would assume that the people who made this uh, interaction are probably, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Bitcoin maximalists in like the nicest way. One of the, and this is, this is I mean, this, this goes back to like old cryptocurrency lore. Like this is like, you know, a good 2014, 2015. The idea of Bitcoin is that at some point it will take over the entire financial world. Uh, with that comes a an eventual, air quotes, $100 million Bitcoin. A $100 million Bitcoin means that I believe, I think that it means that one Satoshi equals one US dollar. I think that's what the equivalency of it would be. So this is why a lot of times when you see people on Twitter talking about like stacking sats, the idea years ago was that every Satoshi you buy in the future would eventually be worth $1. Therefore, if you were putting $300 into the market and you got a million Satoshis, in the future it would be worth a million dollars. That's the idea. This is not the, you know, what's going to happen per se, but it's kind of the thing. So one of the things years ago is that a lot of people believed that the foray for, or the, the, the thing that would bring cryptocurrency to the forefront of everyone around the world was gaming in some sort of way. And that if you had an integration between cryptocurrencies and a video game and people were able to win or get cryptocurrencies from the game that they're playing, in the future it would become something monstrous, i.e., uh, you know, X person was mining Bitcoin back in 2010, they got 900 Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin, it was worth a penny. You know, they only had $4 worth of Bitcoin and meant absolutely nothing to them. Fast forward to, to 2017 and they have millions of dollars. You're playing this Minecraft game. You're getting Satoshis for being able to play. You got 14,000 Satoshis per day. In the future, you are essentially making $14,000 per, you know. It's, it's, it's a very, very abstract thought. I, I like to give you a lot of the, the, the old school uh, Bitcoin ideas when it comes to like making money within this space. But a lot of people have been trying things like this. A lot of other uh, blockchain based games, like games on top of blockchains, haven't really made it. So we've had a lot of news stories sprinkle throughout the years. I mean, like maybe six or seven throughout the last three or four years. 
uh, where companies are trying to integrate in some sort of way and or give prizes in crypto as an incentive for people to get into the market. The idea is that if you like, let's say you had no interest in being in crypto at all. You had zero interest. And one day for your birthday, I gave you a ledger. And I'm like, there's $100 worth of Bitcoin on here. Three and a half weeks later, you look, you have $105. You go, cool, I made $5 from doing nothing. You look a year later, it's at $240. You're like, I'm, I, I doubled my money for doing absolutely nothing. You now, like, ha, you, you, you have skin in the game. Like, you're in the space. And, like, it kind of means something to you now. And therefore, you know, this is how, it's a very easy way to get people into crypto or into investing at all. Uh, when they see something that they have has gained in value, it's a very big incentive to, you know, want more. And therefore, the more people that are in the market that keep buying more, same with stocks, same with art, uh, the value ends up going up as well. So, yeah, let's, I mean, you know, this will continue happening, but it's more of a uh, how big the payoff could be from a Bitcoin integration into a Minecraft kind of game. Yeah. Uh, I think that's going to do it for this video. For those of you who were wondering why the videos were a bit weird the last uh, week or so, I am away traveling. I need some time off. The cryptocurrency space is quite intense for those of you who are uh, new here. I make videos every single day on two different channels. It is here and the other channel is known as Money Rules. And uh, as you might have guessed, uh, making two videos every single day over the course of the last five, six, seven, eight years is is kind of a lot. So I'm away. I'm traveling. I'm trying to relax. Uh, I would implore you, if you are able to, to do the same. If you are able to take a even a three or four day weekend, uh, try to do so. Uh, try and make sure that you are relaxing. Getting. I, I I say this all the time because it needs to be done. Do something that makes you happy. I know it sounds cheesy. I know it sounds corny. I know everyone in, in the space really wants to, you know, hustle and make it and do stuff every single day. You are going to burn out. You need to relax. You need to take time off. Even if that's something as simple as you leaving work early, you instead of doing stuff that you would normally do for the cryptocurrency space after work, relax. Find a whole bunch of movies that you used to watch when you were a kid, movies that you wanted to watch the last couple of years that are on your watch list. Watch them. Get some popcorn. Get some cake. Call your friends over. Do something fun. Relax. We all need it. It is very necessary because I'm telling you, when we get into this hyper bull run extravagant uh, euphoric mode, it is going to get crazy and you will need this time off as well. So. Uh, make sure to relax. The crypto market is not going anywhere. It will still be there tomorrow. It will still be there in three days. I promise you. One of my really good friends, um, he used to check cryptocurrency prices like 20 times a day. And I'm sure some of you out there do the exact same. I got him down to once, once a day, and he feels a lot better. Um, yeah, crypto is going to be there tomorrow. It's going to be there next week. It's going to be there next month. Make sure to relax. It is very, 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 very important. I do hope that you have all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are, wherever the heck you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.